Hey everyone, welcome back to Legacy Builders. Listen, if you could have Tony Robbins' brain on your business, what question would you ask him? In today's episode, I'm gonna share some of the things that I learned from masterminding with Tony Robbins at his private resort in Fiji called Namale and in his backyard here in Florida in Palm Beach. His advice really impacted my life and I wanna share that advice with you today. Let's go. But coming back to you know, supporting Tony Robbins as an affiliate, you know, at the time, my business was really focused on agency and serving clients. So this idea of getting behind Tony and promoting his thing was really unusual at the time. I mean, I started as an affiliate. I did some affiliate marketing, but it wasn't really a big main business for us. And it wasn't like our primary thing at, at all. Never has been, still isn't. Um, but what happened was, is it was really a funny story. And... Um, I had a call with a buddy of mine now, and at the time he wasn't a buddy. He was just a guy who bought one of my products, and he had a call with me, and he bought a paid call, and uh, he wanted to spend an hour with me. And so I did the call, and uh, and he was like really frustrated, really agitated uh, the whole time, and I just couldn't understand what was going on with this guy. And then towards the end of the call, he talked about how he was going to be an affiliate for Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, and he wanted to get to Fiji, and... And I remembered, oh, yeah, that's right. I just got the box in the mail from Tony and Dean. And, oh, yeah, that's right. They are going to Fiji. The top 10 are going to Fiji. And I don't know what it was, but that conversation triggered me to be like, to take a look at it again. You know, because now rewind for a second here. Several months prior to the launch, I signed up as an affiliate to get the welcome package from Dean and Tony. They shipped out a shirt and a mug and a notebook and all this stuff. But I kind of put it on the back burner. I was like, yeah, that's not really my main business. It's not really a focus. Like, let's just, we'll shelf it. And maybe I'll send a few emails. Maybe I'll post on social media, you know, but maybe that's it, right? I didn't really have any intention of, you know, spending a ton of money on it, spending a ton of time on it. Really had no intentions until this conversation with this guy, my buddy, who's now a friend, Brad. And, um, and because he was doing it, now all of a sudden I wanted to do it. Um, and so it was like a competition all of a sudden. And I, uh, another really main driving force was being able to get, you know, Tony Robbins brain on my business, right? Like I figured if I could spend a week with Tony in Fiji at his resort and private Island uh, in Fiji, that would be amazing. And, um, so I, I decided that's when I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's get involved. I talked to my wife about it, went to dinner one night on date night. And I said, Hey, like, um, I want to support Tony. I want to support Dean. I want to, I want to, you know, let's invest 50,000 bucks into advertising and, and let's push some traffic towards them and see what happens. Had and you met so them before time. this time? Not like, then. No. So I, I, okay. I've been to Tony events, uh, never right. at, at that point in time and never been to anything with Dean. Uh, one of the things I knew about Tony, cause I, I went to Tony's events and I also worked behind the scenes at one of Tony's events. So I kind of saw a little bit, more than the average right. bear has seen in, in respect to Tony. So I had a lot of respect for Tony. Uh, right. One of the cool discoveries I had when I was serving uh, UPW was I was I was a runner for him. And me and this other guy, basically, whatever Tony wanted, we would go run and get it, right? And so he wanted coconuts. So we had to go and you know, drive to Whole Foods all around New Jersey and New York and try to find coconuts. And at the time, we couldn't find coconuts anywhere. Like the coconuts could not be found. Um, but we had, that's what, that was our role. And so one of our roles at the end of the event was Tony had to jump on his plane and fly to some other event. And so they're like, Hey, you guys need to go and pack up Tony's, uh, hotel rooms. He's got two of them over there in New York. And at this hotel, you need to go over there, grab all the stuff, bring it back. And so we can put it on the, on the bus and go to the next location. And what was really incredible about that was, uh, Tony had a piece of paper that he wrote out where he had literally his morning rhythms. And if you know anything about Tony Robbins, you'll know that he talks a lot about, you know, the rhythms or the rituals that you do dictate your day and your life. And it was really awesome to see after four decades of doing this event, UPW, right? Where people walk on fire and all that. He still has a checklist that he physically writes in how many times he, how, how many minutes he jumps on his rebounder or does the throat therapy or, 
gets a massage before going out. Like he had all of these items listed and then he would write in either a check that it was done or he'd write in the time that he spent doing it. And, um, and so that was, that was really, uh, an, that was really an amazing experience for me. I don't think a lot of people have yeah. had the opportunity to see that. Um, right. I also saw that he also had his cliff notes for the fire walking day and they were just sitting there on the desk and it was literally his cliff notes for his, for UPW that the whole day of the, of the fire walking experience. And one of the things that I'll never forget <laughs> is on that piece of paper, it said, I am the wizard of Oz. It was like his own personal declaration <laughs> of how he, of how he shows up for others. Now you could take that, interpret that as negative, but I don't, I interpret that positive, right? Knowing Tony now, getting to know him over the years now, um, if you know anything about Tony, like he, he's got a heart of gold. And so see, seeing that that was his declaration at that time, like I am the Wizard of Oz for others, um, was really, truly magical. I mean, it's not something that he ever, has ever said publicly, but it's his own internal dialogue, right? And we all have our own dialogue. Sometimes we share that publicly and sometimes we don't. In that case, Tony didn't. So it was almost like, you know, I was there, I went through that experience and I was serving to, to see that. I really truly believe that uh, because even going into serving, uh, God was stirring in my spirit that it was something that I should do because there was something that I needed to see there. Right. <laughs> and then come lo and behold, I get, a, I get the amazing opportunity to really experience that behind the scenes, right? Which would have never, I don't think I couldn't even pay, you can't even pay for that. <laughs> so Right. Yeah. So you have this experience and, but I mean, largely Dean and Tony are kind of these figures that you don't have much relationship with. And then fast forward, you're, you know, talking to your wife about spending $50,000 to promote right. their product. How did that conversation go? Yeah. So my wife has a background in marketing and in legal and law. And so she knows how to ask all the questions around the subject matter to really poke holes in it or make sure that it's bulletproof. And that's what she did. She asked me all these questions and at the end of the conversation, she says, okay, I'll support that decision. Um, it ended up being a lot more than that. We ended up spending 150 grand, but it was working so well that it made sense to do that. Um, but it was, it's always nice to get the blessing of your spouse. So it was really great that she was on board with it. Um, after right. making that decision, I spent literally three days. I busted out the entire campaign, the funnel, the offer, the ads. Literally, I spent three days, um, something magical about three days, isn't there? <laughs> but I spent three days and I literally just, I scripted out the videos. <laughs> I filmed them that Monday and literally the launch was happening. So I had to get into motion. Like I had no planning time. Like typically in a development cycle, we're spending, you know, months planning for a launch. Well, I had like a week or less. I mean, I had to get things done. And so I remember working Saturday, spent a little time Sunday and spent some time Monday, literally cranking out the entire campaign which then eventually went on to, uh, we ended up placing number five um, out of thousands of affiliates that were part of the launch. Uh, we placed number five, which was awesome. And I think what was even more special <laughs> um, and memorable for me was my wife and I were sitting at the mastermind with Russell over in Boise at, at Russell's office. And we were right in the middle of the mm -hmm. launch, the very first launch that Tony and Dean ever did together which was the biggest in internet history, which still today is the biggest in internet history. They did like $50 million in a two week window, which to most people is like uncomprehensible. Right. And so Russell opens up the mastermind, right? Literally, but like this, okay. So many of you guys know we're in the middle of a launch with for Tony Robbins and I can't lose to Delaney. And like my wife and I are sitting there like, uh, we're sitting right here, dude. Like, are you kidding me? And what was funny was I had the support of about a handful of people in that room who had, who had said, Hey, like, I'm not going to promote this as an affiliate, but I'll promote you and your bonuses. And that's what that launch was all about. Like creating an amazing bonus package. Well, Russell comes in and he's like, Hey, like I can't lose Delaney. Now him and I were like neck and neck, right? Which to me is uh, quite baffling because Russell has a database of more than 102,000 people that pay him 97 bucks a month. So talk about a curated group of buyers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my buyer database is a tiny fraction right. of that uh, in comparison. 
So I was neck and neck. I mean, Russell literally uh, up until almost the very end, like was behind us. <laughs> so he was feeling pressure, you know, to perform and bring the sales in. And uh, he, in that moment, got a bunch of other people in the room to like throw bonuses in to make his bonus better because he was losing and he didn't want to lose. And, uh, you know, it was one of those moments where, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, how could, how could we be a threat to Russell? <laughs> right. And, um, right. and so, uh, and, and we ended up, uh, he ended up outpacing us cause he, he put the pedal to the metal, start spending a lot more money to make sure it happened. Um, and we all were able to laugh about it at the end of the day, but, um, it's, uh, right. It was a, it was a, it was a surreal moment. I wasn't, I was really like, not, I was kind of butthurt about it. Like I was really bummed. Like I was like, dude, like I'm in your mastermind. Like at least you could do is support us. Like what the heck, man, not be competing with us. But, um, but we ended up hanging out in Fiji. And so we landed so number you five land in the top 10? on the top 10. Uh, we ended up beating out people like cool. Billy Jean, Lewis Howes, John Lee Dumas. So we still contended with some big hitters who have a large, who have large audiences. I mean, you look at Lewis Howes. I mean, the guy gets 25 million views on his YouTube channel a week uh, or a month. Uh, you got Dumas who gets a million podcast listeners a month. So we're contending with some pretty heavy affiliates um, to say the least, who are all super competitive. Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up placing number five. That landed us a trip to Fiji where we got to go hang out with Tony and Dean and Russell and Jenna Kutcher and Lewis Howes and Billy Jean and all of the top 10. It was incredible. Um, um, and now before the trip, uh, they did an award ceremony for the top 100 affiliates. And that's actually when uh, we got recognized uh, for being the top affiliate and being number five. Uh, they created these really cool plaques um, for the top 10 um, based on sales. And so they did an award ceremony, which is really modeled after Russell. I think Russell's done the best job at creating an award system and recognizing success. I mean, if, you know, network marketing companies have technically, that's where he got the idea from, but then Russell really did an amazing job. I do believe that's why the company's, um, you know, does over a hundred million a year is because they have an amazing culture. So if you want to duplicate an, an incredible yeah. culture with uh, an award system, ClickFunnels and Russell have done a phenomenal job at that. So uh, Tony and Dean, they did the same thing. They said, okay, yeah. we're going to recognize our top 100 affiliates. We're going to get awards for the top 10. Uh, and the top 10 are also going to come to Fiji. So this was when uh, Tony uh, introduced me on stage as being the top 1% of all marketers and funnel experts in the world, uh, which was awesome, right, to have that recognition um, and to be um, – you know, right. to, to get that endorsement from Tony. I mean, that was um, an incredible milestone if you think about it. Uh, that alone was worth the $150,000 that I put into advertising for their launch, quite frankly. Uh, that was worth every penny. Yeah. Oh, man. How'd that amazing. make you feel? Um, and in the moment, I didn't know how Tony was going to introduce me to, on the stage, but I was one of three people that had the opportunity to share lessons from the launch and I was able to pour back into those hundred affiliates, and um, and yeah, it was an incredible experience just to be able to add add value to peers, right? Like everyone is in the room because they're one of the top affiliates for them, uh, and so they weren't there. They had to have generated revenue to be in the room, um, and I think it was at least a hundred sales to even be in the room. Um, I forget the exact number, but you had to have like there was a threshold. But and uh, yeah, it was incredible. So from there. Um, we went to Fiji, had an incredible time. Um, absolutely amazing experience there in Fiji. Getting Tony's brain in our business was, you know, something you, you can't even pay for really. I mean, although, I mean, I think you can pay for that. I think it's like a million bucks, but yeah. to have this opportunity to be in Fiji with, you know, Russell and Dean and Tony and all these amazing people who really are about impact and are really about you know, how to make, how do we make this place better, right? How do we improve people's lives, right? I think a lot of people have this misconception that it's like about the money and it's really not for, for someone like Tony and someone, uh, you know, like Dean or like Russell, like it's really not about that because you get to a place where you're beyond that, where, you know, 
money becomes a tool and a resource to make a greater, even greater impact. And I was really able to see that. You're not able to see that on the front end of things a lot, but you you are able to see it when you sit down with people and you you break bread and you fellowship and you you have fun. And that and that's really what Fiji was about. Mm-hmm. It was about you know connecting on a deeper level, like relaxing. We didn't have anything to prove, right? We already proved what we needed to prove to be in the room uh, or to be on the resort. And uh, it was an absolutely memorable experience that I'll right. forever remember for sure. And then uh, we also, from there, um, we ended up supporting their next launch. So in the Fiji the first year, I committed to spending a quarter of a million bucks on the next launch. So Dean's uh, whole agenda really from Fiji was, okay, can I, get you, can, can I get you to commit to being a part of the next launch? Right. Because you think about it. If he can commit the top 10 affiliates who did over 10 million in revenue collectively for him, if you can commit them to the next launch, then that pretty much guarantees another 10 million in revenue coming in the gate. Right. So that was his agenda on even right. creating that experience in the first place, which is super smart. Um, if you do affiliate marketing, if you have affiliate contests, absolutely model that, model that because super successful. I mean, every launch I have, they have a ton of support because, because of that model. And so, so I I told Dean in the moment in Fiji, I said, yeah, I'll I'll commit 250. We'll spend 250 on the next launch. Now what that did was that was now ammunition for Dean to be able to tell other affiliates like, Hey, Delaney's going to spend 250. What are you going to spend? Right. So the <laughs> yeah, next launch, Russell on his toes again. Yeah. And yeah, and get Russell all fired up. Right. So the next launch comes around about a year later. Um, in, in 2020, it was right before everything went, the world went crazy, I say. And, um, we, we spent a quarter of a million bucks, but this time we had so much more comp- competition. I mean, I had now I had Duma spending a hundred grand. I had all these other top affiliates also spending a ton of money. Like the first year, there was no, there was no track record of success with this offer. So people mm-hmm. were kind of hesitant. Whereas I went into it with a mindset of I'm all in. I'm going to win this thing. Right. Other people were like hesitant. They're like not sure. They're kind of like spending their budgets last minute. I won the first year with all of that you know, with placing number five, I believe, because I had that mindset of I'm going all in. And then the second year I had the same mindset. I was like, listen, you know, I know it worked this, the first year. I'm going to do it the second year, but we're going to do it better. The problem was they changed the rules of the game. So <laughs> the second year they changed the rules of the game, which wasn't basically put us at a disadvantage. Um, and so we weren't able to do what we normally would do in a proper affiliate campaign. Um, and we were competing with all of these other new affiliates who also were going to be throwing in 100K or 200K in some cases, right? So now we're competing with, 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 with budgets and eyeballs around the same message, right? The same narrative. Right. Uh, beyond all that, we, uh, <laughs> we placed number four. Uh, the next day after that competition... I got a, a call from my buddy who runs Russell's ads and he said, Hey man, I'm sorry. But, uh, last night Russell said, I can't lose to Delaney again. Um, so we're going to need to do whatever it takes. The funny part about Magic that word. story is again. that he did it again. And this time, he, but he only beat us by like 35 cents. It was like just enough to push him past the line of what he needed to be able to say, I beat Delaney. Uh, got a lot of got a little competitiveness, right? <laughs> Yeah, now, that's amazing. Fast forward, I got the opportunity to to spend basically, you know, like what was it? I think four days over here in Florida in Tony's backyard in Palm Beach. Um, I had just finished publishing my book. I had the first 12 copies of my book, uh, The Entrepreneur Evangelist, and I got 12 copies made so I can give them out to people at the mastermind who I wanted to give them to, you know, like like Dean and like Russell and like different people that were there. And so I gave Russell a copy. I said, Hey man, you're going to love this book. Like, um, it's all about my story of how I died, came back to life and blah, 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 blah. We had dinner together and I was able to go deeper on what he was most excited about with ClickFunnels 2.0. It was great. And from that, eventually, uh, he was like, i reached out to him about a week and a half later. I said, Hey man, how'd you like the book? You know, would you be open to doing a, a forward for it? 
And um, after all that competitiveness and all that craziness, he he said yes. And so um, so that was at least awesome of him to do to write the forward for the book. Couldn't be a better person to write the forward. I mean, Tony would be great, mm-hmm. but I mean, Russell, we share the same value system, right? We 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 have a, mm-hmm. our core beliefs around God guiding us. We both have that commonality, right? Um, we're both Christian entrepreneurs, so it was like it couldn't have been a, from a better person. Um, and so that was incredible. And and I don't right. know that would have happened if it wasn't for me supporting Russell so much over the years, being an affiliate of his, and then being a supporter of his partners, which is Tony and Dean on their on their launches. Right. So I think it's it's a collective combination of years, right? Like a lot of people don't see that, it, you know, sometimes relationships take time, right? Like if mm-hmm. I tried to go to Russell and ask him for a forward when I first started, there's no way he would have said yes. He, had, he, he wouldn't have been able to endorse me. He hadn't, he, he hadn't right. known me, right? But a lot of time people try to get an endorsement and then wonder why they don't, you know, don't have success with getting that endorsement when they haven't earned yeah. the right to get it. Right. And so one again, I think from your perspective, your focus was never on building the tallest tower in town. You know, you so much of your success was off of helping other people build their, you know, empires, if you will, build build their towers, um, you know, through your clients with building their funnels and focusing on their funnels and with, you know, promoting Russell and promoting Tony, Tony and Dean's offer. And so it's over these years, you know, you had been, I imagine you were looked at as somebody you had given, I mean, you'd given all those people millions of dollars, uh, you know, in value and in revenue. And so I think that's a important part of your story is that you were focused on giving value. Um, Absolutely. And and then you got to see that come back to serve you in some ways. Yeah, totally. And I call that earning the right, right? So you earn the right to make an offer by serving first. And when you serve first and you produce results for others in advance of you making an offer, then it's so much easier and you have so much more success with getting a yes or having success after you've done that process. It's so true. And, uh, the tough part is that in the beginning, you have to put in the work, right? You have to put in the work. Mm-hmm. You have to scratch other people's backs. You have to produce results for other people, right? And so for yeah. a lot of people, you know, they just want instant results, right? I think it's a cultural thing. <laughs> but, uh, right. you know, there was time that had to be put in. Um, now, from there, um, I was able to hang out with Tony, get his brain on our business again. A second year, my wife was able to come. For the first year, she wasn't able to come. She, she had just given birth to our daughter, like three or four days before I landed in Fiji the first time. So it was really great for my wife to be able to be a part of the second experience over in Florida. And I think one of the biggest takeaways from that experience of four days, hanging out with Tony, with Dean, with Russell, with all of these guys, um, and ladies as well, there's ladies in the room, um, was that our business is most like Tony's. So Tony, you know, After, you know, the pandemic hit in 2020, he lost about 90 something million in revenue from all the live events that he was hosting and he had to shut them all Mm -hmm. down. But even amongst all that, his net worth grew, right? So when I was with him in Fiji, his net worth was like five point something billion. When I was with him in Florida, like over a year after the pandemic had hit, his net worth was over $7 billion. And wow. he went deep on his business and, and the different spokes of that business. But it was a huge revelation for me because my business, the way that I've created it, is very similar. His is a little different in that he partners with companies that are really well-established brands or have huge budgets, Right. Like he's invested in AI and robotics. He's invested in organic growing. I mean, he's invested in all types of different things. Um, but it's similar to ours, right? Like our model is we partner with people. We help them launch their expertise online, scale their impact. And then we take a, a 10 to 20% profit share after advertising expenses are taken off the top. So we have skin in the game, right? Mm-hmm. And so the vision I had years ago was if I could just have 100 winning racehorses, all producing 10 million a year or more, 
10% of that adds up, right? Mm -hmm. If one winning racehorse goes down, you still got 99 more. And it was really um, a great experience to sit there, to be in uh, Tony's brand new space where he's got his virtual studio that he spent like seven or eight million bucks to build. And then his physical space is, is in the same work, it's in the same environment, right? So he's got his virtual space and he's got his physical space so he can fit like 2,500 people in the stands. So he can do virtual and live. So he never has to go down again. That was like his big pivot. This is, is all at his place in Florida? It's all at his place in Florida, yeah. So he can, wow. he can have 2,500 people, I think it is, um, sitting. That's what he was building for. And then he can have a virtual experience where he could be broadcasting and streaming to a million people if he wanted to. Amazing. So what was cool though, was really being a part of his journey going through that. Um, you know, when he, when he, when, when the world took a hit with the pandemic in 2020, uh, everyone had to shift or pivot. Right. And he pivoted by saying, okay, I can't do physical events right now. So what am I going to do? I still have to serve. I still have this responsibility. I still have this, this, um, this, this urgency to provide value transform people's lives. And so he pivoted and went online and the blessing in disguise for him was he started doing challenges and was at, and absolutely began crushing it. Um, the first challenge they did, they spent like 80 grand on, on advertising and they did, you know, millions in revenue from that. I think they had like from that first challenge, I mean, they had hundreds of thousands of people registered for their challenge um, that they first started doing right out of the gate when everyone was still virtual at this time. Now things are, you know, mm-hmm. are, are both. Um, but it was really cool to be a part. I was really a part of that experience of that pivot. Right. And, uh, it was really cool to see how that pivot was, um, has put him in a place of strength, not a place of weakness or not a place of loss. You know, he went from five something billion in revenue and net worth to, you know, seven something. Right. So obviously he did something right. Now, so one of the things that really stood out to me from that experience with him in Florida was he said, your daughter will be able to live until she's 200 years old if she wants. And he was telling us about a book that he's working on where it's all about longevity and he's going to publish it either next year or in a couple of years, whenever. And it's all about the technology that's coming out in the next 10 to 15 years. So he said that we have the technology that it's going, to, it's going to be released in the next 10 to 15 years that our kids will live to their 200 uh, if they want to. Uh, and all hmm. of us were like, you know, eyes were wide open, right? Like what? 200? Like who would ever think that's even possible, right? right. And to me, that was the revelation um, that showed me the legacy that I want to leave like I want to make sure that my daughter and her future children have a place that's worth living in 200 years, right? Like she's two right now. She has a long time to go <laughs> if she's going to live to mm-hmm. 200, Lord willing, um, if she wants to, right? I mean, that'll be, I guess, her choice. I don't even know what type of technology he's even talking about because <laughs> um, yeah. it's not coming out for another 10 to 15 years. But that's really what what legacy is, right? It's, you know, what are you passing on? What is the, uh, what are you giving to your kids and what are they going to give to their children? And how are you passing on your values? How are you passing on your expertise? And it really got me thinking more about legacy. I mean, I think, you know, when I was single, I didn't think about legacy at all. Right. But when I became married and had kids, like all of a sudden you start thinking, you know, what happens if I, if I go to be with the Lord, Right. Or what happens when I'm gone and, you know, what knowledge, wisdom, what resources I'm going to, am I going to pass on to my children and their children? None of us know the time that we're going to be taken up to, and, and go to be with the Lord. None of us. Right. Uh, none of us know that, 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 that time, but we do have the opportunity to start thinking about the impact that we're going to make and how we're going to do it. Right. And so I would say, uh, the formula for success is really tapping into the self-education industry that is expected to triple and to explode to a billion a day by 2025, according to Forbes.com. And if I was to put into a formula, I would say this, launching your expertise is all about sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, your skills, the gifts that God's given you. 
And when you do that by serving others, that allows you to make money to monetize your expertise. Okay. And that allows you to impact other people's lives in one way, shape or form, whether it's relationships, whether it's health, whether it's wealth. I can tell you countless examples of people going from literally in the hole, right, to making millions of dollars a year and impacting thousands of people's lives. And I have several of those stories because I've, you know, my business, my business and the people that are involved in it are responsible for that outcome, right? But there's countless right. examples of smaller stories. I mean, there's tons of success of people launching and doing, you know, five figures or six figures or multiple six figures or, se or seven figures, right? And they're all making an impact in their own unique ways, right? So I would say if you're ready, if you're at a place where legacy matters to you, contribution matters to you, or where you're at a place where you want to launch your expertise online, you want to scale your impact and you want to build your legacy, then my team and I would love to help you. We are a full service digital marketing agency um, that truly has evolved to a place where I can say now that it's our soul's purpose to help experts launch their expertise and scale their impact. Um, and it is an honor to work with people like Ryan, for example, who has um, used our frameworks and systems to launch his expertise. And the guy is generated over 20 million in net profit. That's not gross revenue, that's net profit through the use of funnels and courses and advertising to acquire leads or sales. Or think about another woman that we've helped to, literally her company was evaluated at $50 million recently. And before that, she had no brand, she had no audience, no list. All she had is expertise that she had results in her own life and then she had results in other people's life, like a handful of people. Now she's got thousands of customers. She's got like 50,000 people in her database, right? She would have never had any of that if it wasn't for her stepping out of her comfort zone and being willing to share, be willing to, to, to tell her story, be willing to offer help, be willing to serve others, truly. And if she didn't have a way to monetize it, she wouldn't be able to keep it going, right? So I'm here to say you can turn your knowledge, your skills, your expertise, and the results that you've had in your life and the results of others into a business that blesses you and blesses others. Yeah, amazing. And, and you've gone through this story of, you know, having this near-death experience where you died and came back to life and were really awakened to what purpose was to really, you started thinking about legacy. And then over the last, you know, 15 15 years or so, you've started to see that legacy play out as you've been able to help others launch their expertise. What are you excited about and expecting about over the next, let's say the next decade of the work that you get to do? So over the next decade, um, there's a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about is um, through my journey, helping more people wake up to hear God speak. I think that's, there's nothing more exciting than, than that spiritual purpose. Um, so that's one, uh, I will say, you know, and I've, and I've said it before, you know, in my story that I believe that that is the, the key that's allowed me to unlock a tremendous amount of success. I definitely would not be here if it wasn't for God's hand, uh, through it all. And so I would say from a, from a, here perspective and an eternal perspective, that is probably the most important message that can be received globally. Um, beyond that, it's being a part of campaigns that shift the world in which we live in a positive way, right? Um, I think there's a, uh, for me at least, there is a several campaigns that we're involved with now that I truly believe um, will shift the world in a way that'll be better for our kids and their kids and their kids. But it's the work that we need to put in now in order to have that outcome, right? Like it's not going to just magically mm -hmm. happen because um, yep. otherwise left to its own device, right? It will, it'll turn out negative. 
<laughs> but yep. I'm excited about being a part of campaigns where, you know, I mean, just for example, we're talking about launching campaigns now where we have, you know, a million or 2 million people be a part of them. Right. Like when mm-hmm. I first started, I never would have thought that was possible. Right. Like I never would have thought I would be crafting campaigns that I can spend a million dollars in advertising in a 10 day period and have millions of people from around the globe tune in and listen live. Right. You know, I never thought, you know, that I would have the opportunity to meet some of the people that I've had the opportunity to meet. I mean, I'm now meeting people and doors are now beginning to be unlocked to be able to meet people that truly are shaping what the world's going to look like in 50, 100 years from now. And I believe that God has really designed and developed my expertise to really be a a pivotal uh, lever in that happening, right? And it was about several months ago where I was really meditating on um, what's going on in the world. And God continued to remind me over the period of a couple of weeks that the skills that I've developed have been developed for a time such as this. And that I would, I have a, pl- a part to play and that, that, that he needs me at the table. And so for mm-hmm. many weeks, months, I really didn't understand what that meant. I had a glimpse, but I really didn't know. And then before you knew it, one door would open and another door would open and another call person would call me. And all of a sudden, all these doors began to swing wide open so that eventually it became a very evident of what that role is. And right now, as I'm filming this, recording this, this is, you know, taking place behind the scenes. So I would say I'm really excited about the campaigns of different people that were helping to, to help them share their story, share their expertise and get their message out to a larger audience than they could ever get on their own. There are so many, I've seen, there is so many gifted, talented, um, incredibly well-intentioned people that have a message, a story, an expertise, but they have no way and means to figure out how do I get it in front of the right people? I mean, that's my business, right? Mm -hmm. So I, by nature, I see a ton of people like that where, see, I'm a visionary. God has given me that strength, that gift. And so I am able to just sit down and talk with people, catch a glimpse of their vision. And then God shows me the bigger picture and like a much larger vision than in many times they can even see or comprehend. And and so it's a real, it's a real blessing truly uh, to have that gift. Yeah. But it's fascinating to see, like, it's fascinating to see the mindsets of people where they are. And then be able to look at it through my lens and see a whole different picture that's a thousand times different and bigger than what they're perceiving in the moment. Yeah. It sounds like the next 10 years is for you is going to be focused on helping to build a world that your daughter would want to live to 200 in. Absolutely. Sounds like legacy to me. That's right. (laughs) Hence the show Legacy Builders. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hence the legacy builder. So this has been amazing to just dive deep into your story. I'm sure on future episodes, we'll dive even deeper into some of these individual stories and some of these moments that have stuck out to you. And it'll be exciting to bring other legacy builders onto the show. As we bring this episode to a close, uh, where do you want our listeners to go if they are interested in working with you and your team? Yeah, head on over to perfectfunnelsystem.com. Perfect funnelsystem.com and you can learn all about our team, what we do, how we can serve you. Uh, or you can go to briandelaney.com as well. Brian with a Y. Gotta have a Y. Brian with a Y, Delaney, D-U-L-A-N-E-Y. You can go over there as well and see more about what we're up to and uh, go deeper on the different programs that we're launching as well. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Brian. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me on Legacy Builders, and I would encourage you to come back to the next episode next week to get more clarity on your journey to launch your expertise online 
scale your impact, and build your legacy. If you're ready to get the process started of launching your expertise online the right way, then I recommend go to launchexpertise.com or maybe you're at a place where you're ready to really scale your expertise and your impact. Go to launchexpertise.com. There you'll have several options. Number one, you can get a free copy of my brand new book, The Entrepreneur Evangelist, which I share the secrets that have unlocked more than $300 million of results for my clients and partners in our own campaigns. You could also join a 33 days of coaching with me uh, that's free, where I give you insights and wisdom on your journey to launching your expertise and scaling your impact over the course of 33 days. And that's worth at least 5,000 bucks, but for right now, you can get it for free. And lastly, if you're someone who wants to take the absolute faster, smarter path when it comes to launching your expertise online and scaling your impact, I'd recommend scheduling a call with my team where we can see how we can support you to crush goals and generate seven or eight figures yourself in a short period of time. We have more awards than nearly anyone in the entire community, and for good reason. And we would love to help you just like we've helped them. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Legacy Builders.